Over the past few years, I have primarily focused my photography on three of the magnificent Hawaiian islands, Oahu, Kauai, and the Big Island. However, despite visiting the Valley Isle of Maui multiple times, I had always been hesitant to explore it with more depth, considering it to be too expensive, crowded, and troublesome for photography. But when my newly adopted parents, Darwin and Lummi, mentioned their upcoming trip to Maui to visit relatives, I couldn't resist the opportunity to join them. After spending a few exhilarating nights capturing the Milky Way and the volcano on the Big Island, I decided to island hop over to Maui. I wanted to put my assumptions about this island to the test and see if I had been mistaken all along. Our first stop on the Valley Isle surprisingly wasn't Sonic or Krispy Kreme, but the iconic and majestic Eyal Valley. Here, let me get out of this water here. All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. It's me, Spencer Lee, back with another travel video. Today, we are out here on the beautiful Valley Isle of Maui. And this is the first time we're doing a photography vlog here on the island. I've been here a couple of times, um, but haven't done any real serious photography here. Um, so I figured, had a week off, you know, we would spend a couple of days in Maui, even though it's super expensive, and even though everything is pretty much a tourist attraction, uh, we would spend some time, take some pictures, and, you know, just try to do some serious photography here. But we're out here today at the beautiful Eyal Valley, and we're shooting the Eyal Needle with some water flows in the foreground. Darwin is just scouting out, scouting things out, taking his shots, and then I'll uh, take my shots afterwards. Um, but yeah, just to give you a little bit of a backstory, it's been a hectic couple of days. Um, I had actually booked this Maui trip ahead of time and Darwin and Lummi said, oh, we'll come up for a day. So here we are, gonna hang out with them for a day and they're gonna fly home, but the rest of the trip will be totally up to us. Um, but then after I had booked this whole entire Maui trip, the volcano erupted on the Big Island. So went over to Kilauea for a couple of nights, shot all night. I'm totally sleep deprived. I've been up for the past 48 hours and probably have only gotten maybe a combined five and a half hours of sleep throughout this that entire time. So pretty sleep deprived, but when you have views like this, you honestly can't complain. Yeah, beautiful Eyal Valley, beautiful Eyal Needle. Perfect way to start off this, uh, this quick little island hopping trip. shots but didn't quite fall in love with any. The afternoon light was way too harsh for my taste but still the views were pretty and it felt nice to get my feet wet and take a nap in the hot sun after spending the past few nights freezing my ass off at Kilauea. Now Darwin and Lummi made plans only to stay for one night and with the prices of lodging here on Maui it didn't quite make sense for them to get a hotel or an Airbnb. So the plan was to spend the night up at Haleakala where we would shoot sunset Milky Way, sleep, and then wake up for sunrise on the next day. After grabbing some dinner at LNL, which we would regret later, we headed up the long and windy road to visit the House of the Sun. Dinner with a view! <laughs> oh my god, crazy. All right. Woo, check out this view. It's looking absolutely incredible. We are are here at the summit of Haleakala shooting sunset. After shooting Eyal Valley, Lummi was gracious enough to drive us hour and a half up the windy road because with my sleep deprivation, it's like driving impaired. I'm like legally unsafe. Yeah, basically very unsafe to drive with my energy level. But we saw this scene dri driving up and we immediately said, all right, we need to get to get over here and shoot sunset. So probably gonna set up a nice wide angle time lapse. So you've got the beautiful sunset light painting the cinder cones and then we've got high clouds in the background, so hopefully those stick around and lights up uh, our frame. We're just gonna do a, a nice kind of wide angle time lapse and then maybe pick out some telephoto shots in the meantime, but it is looking absolutely beautiful, absolutely amazing right now. 
It's not one of those scenes where you need a suit to include all of the sky. It's a little bit more of a telephoto shot, to be honest, or a telephoto-ish wide-angle shot, <laughs> if that makes sense. Let's see here. We do want to include some of the high clouds. We do want to include most of the cinder cones here. There we go, aperture priority, F16. Yeah, I think 35 mil is our go-to shot here. Probably two second intervals. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful shot here. Man, it's really cold and really windy. So I'm trying to look for telephoto comps and to be honest, I'm not really seeing a whole lot. I mean, mostly, it's, I mean, it's a very nice wide angle scene, but you know, punching in, all the cinder cones don't look too crazy, just kind of on their own. It's more so when they work together in one full frame that uh, it really creates a pleasing image. And it's just the, the landscape in general, it just looks like Mars. So that's why the wide angle shot works so well but I'm having a little bit of difficulty picking out any sort of intimate detail to photograph. We'll see if the light changes and does something spectacular, you know, there might be something that jumps out at me, but in terms of like maybe doing a telephoto time lapse, I don't think that we're gonna be in store for that today. You know, it's just nothing is really catching my eye. And maybe it's because I'm so exhausted. You know, maybe, maybe because I'm so tired that the creativity juices are low, but honestly, nice gimme shot. Hopefully these high clouds stay around and they light up and. Yeah, we'll see, but enjoy the time lapse. I'm gonna try and do my best to stay warm as much as I can, because man, it is not fun up here right now. It is cold AF. Woo. So yeah, I lied and I did end up setting up a telephoto time lapse. I just needed for more shadows to develop over the landscape. We're leaving that time lapse going because the high cloud still might light up on this side. But I'm gonna try and see if we can find a shot shooting into the sun. Hopefully you guys can hear me because I don't think I can hear myself right now. <laughs> Crazy. sunset we found ourselves a good parking stall sort of away from the wind and as the sunlight faded we headed back out to braid the elements in hopes of capturing the milky way <laughs> this wind is unreal but we're at our first shot first spot for sunset i don't even know what i'm talking about anymore because i'm so tired we're at our first spot for milky way just gonna take a couple of blue hour shots get my foreground and then set the thing up for a time lapse and I think I'm just gonna leave it and then head back to the car and try and catch catch some sleep, some sleep. <coughs> and then 
hopefully they'll wake me up when the time is right to move but honestly I'm so tired but this wind is absolutely killer hopefully it doesn't blow over our time lapse here we couldn't have asked for better Milky Way conditions well I guess a little less wind would have been nice but our skies were totally clear all night long if I wasn't so sleep deprived I probably would have hiked down to the crater to find some better compositions but oh well I guess we can save that for next time Good morning everybody. Welcome back to our second day here on Maui. We shot sunset up here in Haleakala and then shot Milky Way pretty much almost, almost all night long. We were able to get a couple of hours of sleep uh, in the car and then we basically just stayed up here until sunrise. So woke up this morning, uh, drove to our where we're going to park for sun sunrise and then found this beautiful leading line using utilizing the road and taking pictures of the Milky Way core setting almost over the telescopes. We were trying to get telescopes towards the end, but we couldn't just due to the positioning and all that kind of stuff. So glad we were able to get at least one shot uh, over here right now. So what I think you're gonna do, got one very, very cold sunrise ahead of us. As you can tell, it's freezing cold. I've got like four layers on and I'm still freezing cold because of this wind, but we're gonna go head over there, set up a time lapse for sunrise, and uh, yeah, just see how it goes. I mean, you can't really ask for a whole lot because uh, it's like super clear. Uh, I'm always, pretty much always up here at Haleakala, um, unless there's high clouds, which there aren't a whole lot of. But we've got low clouds on the horizon, so hopefully we'll be able to get some nice light textures on the clouds and then on the landscape as well, so. Yeah, excited for this uh, for this sunrise. Whew, but it's cold. Usually, the uh, <laughs> getting up here for sunrise at Haleakala requires a sunrise reservation, but because. I mean, I tried to get a sunrise reservation the regular, but the regular way, but because there wasn't any available, even though I was at 7 a.m. on the dot pushing the button, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. So we decided, well, it might be the best thing to just kind of wait, stay up here and wait all the way till from sunset all the way till sunrise, because you know, driving an hour and a half back into town is just not ideal, and you know, we wanted to be up here for sunrise anyway. So. Here we are. We're here a little bit early. We have about an hour till sunrise, but I wanted to start off my first time lapse here. Wide angle shot. It's the same shot that we took last night uh, of the cinder cones, directly into the sun though, this time.
There she is. Oh, man. Now, this is absolutely magical. This is why we came to Maui, because we wanted to witness something like this. Now, shooting sunrise and sunset on Mauna Kea is pretty similar, but I find that, you know, the sunrises and sunsets up here at Haleakala, they tend to light up the clouds a little bit more. Maybe it's the fact that we're at 10,000 feet instead of 13,000. I'm not, I don't, I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful morning. And it's just absolutely incredible right now. After spending that cold night up at 10,000 feet, this Lokomoko from Kula Lodge definitely hit the spot. We somehow found ourselves back at Iao Valley. I was about to take a nap in the car when Darwin ordered Lummi to come and get me because the conditions were better than yesterday. Well, he was right. a bit more cloud cover today so this allowed us to snag some evenly lit shots of the water flow to create a much more pleasing image when compared to the harsh afternoon light that we got yesterday. I reluctantly had to drop off my adopted parents at the airport and after settling into my Airbnb and grabbing a depressive solo dinner at IHOP, I headed out to scout out a Milky Way composition during sunset it's time. It's a bit crowded, eh? Alright, so here's the plan. We've got this nice composition set up. There's nice rocks here in the foreground and the waves are kind of crashing in between. So we'll shoot this like a regular old sunset, but we'll also shoot into blue hour. That way we'll get our blue hour frames. And then around 11 o'clock, the Milky Way will be here. So I'm thinking about waking up, or I mean going home taking a nap, but waking up at 11 and maybe getting out here by midnight. By the time midnight comes around, the Milky Way is going to be around here and then 1 a.m. around here. But then we'll kind of come to the same exact spot, try to utilize the pretty much the same exact composition. I know the level adjustments on my tripod is all set in place. I got the Milky Way lens on there. We've just got a rear ND filter on there just to shoot sunset. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes.
After snagging my blue hour shots, I headed back home for a quick nap, woke up around midnight, and headed back out to the beach to capture the Milky Way. Ooh, wow, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful conditions here for tonight's Milky Way. Just finding our rocks here from last night. Pretty sure these are the ones. <sighs> Have the similar track set setup. Very similar in terms of the composition. The only thing that's really different is the settings here. But we'll get everything set up and get going. The tide was a bit too high for me to comfortably leave my time lapse going, so I did have to move my camera back a little bit. But thankfully, I was still able to use the ambient street lights to light my foreground. hours of shooting I had to bail on these epic Milky Way conditions to drive all the way out to Hana for sunrise. All right well good morning everybody we made it to Hana safely in one piece surprisingly I don't know how I'm doing this to be quite honest because went back home after sunset yesterday slept for two hours and then got up, shot Milky Way for a few hours, and then drove all the way out here to Hana. It's like two and a half hour drive. And uh, <laughs> it's literally like two hours of sleep only. I think I probably need to try and take a nap before I head back uh, towards town. But you know, we'll see what our energy level is like throughout the day. But we are out here this morning at the Black Sand Beach, the main, very popular Black Sand Beach here, out here in Hana. the black sand and the contrast of the white wash of the waves on, those, on the black sand. It just looks absolutely incredible. As you see, when the waves crash, uh, crash up and just surround that rock over there, it makes for a really, really cool flow shot. Uh, sunrise, I don't know, not looking too hot, not looking too crazy. If anything, we're going to be hoping for some light rays to come through, maybe a sun star coming out from behind uh, the mountain peak down there on that side. I really just hope that uh, we'll be able to get some nice water flow and hopefully get at least a little bit of sky interest. You know, a little bit is better than none at all. So we'll see what we can get this morning. Maybe I have to get down and a little bit closer to the water. I mean, the waves are washing up here earlier, but they've just since died down. The thing that I don't want to do is like this foot, this beach is really known to be very prone to footprints. I mean, if I turn the camera around and you look right behind us, <laughs> look at all my tripod holes and my footprints. So the last thing that I want to do is uh, contaminate my composition, this composition with some footprints that I can't get rid of. Looks like a lot of the waves are coming up right, right about here. I don't want to go in, again, I don't want to go in too far because then I'm going to contaminate the composition again as if I'm not doing that enough with all the footprints on this beach. Uh. Ooh, 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 big wave. Oh yeah, 
that's good. Nice moody. Uh, it really goes well with the mood right now because there's no light whatsoever. After what felt like an hour of waiting, the sun finally came out and gave us enough atmosphere to capture our sunrise shot. And this is why we get up early for sunrise. Literally, only ones in the parking lot. There's a few people here, but uh, hopefully I can be one of the few people on the trail, get up to the waterfall early, be able to take some unobstructed shots of the waterfall before it gets too crowded. I think if you're a photographer and you're looking at Maui, just be prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice to your sleep schedule to get your shots because everything else, everything good is so inundated with tourists. So if you want, really, really want that shot, you know, wake your ass up at three in the morning, make the long drive out to Hana before sunrise and just get out here as soon as you can. Cause literally it's 7.30. Most people are either eating breakfast still at their hotel or just kind of starting the road to Hana so hopefully we'll be up there we would get a couple of shots alone hopefully we'll see Whew. ah yes the tree of life this is one of the things that I did want to photograph on this trail. Let's see if we can find an angle for it. Well, there she is. Baga is tall for sure, but hella dry right now. Oh man. Oh, if I guess, I guess if I didn't, if I needed a reason to come back, then this would be it. But I think if I am gonna come back, definitely gonna rent an RV and camp at the Black Sand Beach, shoot sunrise there and then come over here. And then that way we'll have the RV for Haleakala as well. So that'll be much more comfortable and much more uh, logistically uh, <laughs> better for us, especially when we're running on such little sleep anyways. Grabbing a couple of hours in each location would probably be beneficial to us instead of having to drive back and forth. All right, let's see if we can go create something though. Maybe some telephoto shots might not be that bad. We'll see. These falls are so big that we can just barely fit it in this 20 mil frame. But, you know, it's so small today that I don't know if it's even worth shooting. I mean, I hiked all this way, I might as well take a shot. At least we got some exercise in. Well, that waterfall was pretty disappointing. Too bad this trip to Hana had to end on such a sour note. 
After grabbing some lunch at Chick-fil-A and dumping cards, I took a nap and headed out for one last sunset here on the Valley Isle. Speaking of dull and boring subjects. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well, last sunset here in Maui for this trip. And we are out here on this beach shooting this dead tree that's in the water here. Uh, it's not actually in the water, it's in the sand. We need the tide to be a little bit higher for us to really get the best shot, but honestly, I'm just lazy and I don't really feel like researching and trying to find a new location, so we're just gonna shoot this anyways. I think it's a perfect subject to do a couple time lapses. We'll do one facing this way so we get nice golden light and maybe some earth shadow behind it, and then we'll also do one facing the sun. There's a little bit of high clouds out towards uh, behind the side, so we'll see if we can catch a little bit of action for sunset. Um, but yeah, very simple, nothing too crazy. Just a simple, relaxing uh, sunset composition subject uh, for this evening. I guess if I had to reflect on the trip a little bit, I would say that I definitely had underestimated how beautiful Maui was and you know I've had all I had all this preconceived ideas of you know there's too much tourist, everything good that good to shoot, there's too much tourist, and it's not as good as Big Island, Haleakala is not as good as Big Island and um, it's just too expensive and it's not even worth it. But after opening myself up to being here and you know shooting seriously over here for a couple of days there's a lot of potential especially out in Hana when it comes to like sunrise and seascapes which is you know something that we of course love to do um, and then obviously the iconic shots of the big waterfall on Hana we still have to come back for so I definitely can see us doing more serious landscape photography trips here maybe not Airbnb kind because the driving back and forth from like Haleakala to the Airbnb and then from the Airbnb all, all the way to Hana was kind of a yeah <laughs> that was kind of a nuisance I think if we are going to do this trip again we'll probably get multiple drivers so Darwin and Lummi is definitely coming <laughs> Lummi can drive during the day and maybe we'll even get Garrett to drive at night so then we don't have to drive at all that way we can just sleep um, but yeah we'll probably rent like a four person camper van and just kind of bum it out in the camper van. That way we can sleep on location and, you know, shoot Milky Way and just go to sleep right after. Instead of this driving back and forth between each location, having to wake up earlier than we have to for our sunrise and sunsets and staying out later than we have to. Uh, I think that'll help a lot for our next trip. And there's definitely a lot of camping spots, you know. We camped up at Halakala already, no issues. And then back in Hana where we shot, sunrise is another camper RV spot. So. If we set up home base there, we're like in the per perfect position to just quickly run over to do a sunrise and then, you know, do an early morning waterfall hike and get there before the crowds get there. And, you know, it's actually a really, really smart move to do that RV thing. So I think that's the plan for next time. It's, you know, just goes to show you that even though you think you might be an expert on what's good and what's not good. And I would definitely still, you know, put Big Island and Kauai over Maui, but to kind of downplay how special this island is in terms of like landscape photography and the quality of the mercury and all that kind of stuff and you know I definitely downplayed it a little too much there's definitely some potential to be had here
rushed over here real quick across the road because look at this. Wow, what a scene. I was surprised that the short trip to Maui went as well as it did. My reservations about this island were indeed true for the most part, but still, Maui is a beautiful island worthy of any landscape and nature photographer's attention. Just make sure you're prepared to get out there at stupid o'clock to beat the crowds. But yeah, that's a wrap for another travel video. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you tune in next week where we chase some more epic sunsets and Milky Way on the Big Island. We'll see you then.